and on our Zoom. On our Zoom press. Shishir, are you there?
हेलो
Bala sir, can we start? Yes, sir, you can start. Uh, your voice is not audible. Uh, is it audible now? Yeah, much better. So I'll go ahead and start. Yes, huh? yes, yes, please. Cool. Hey guys, uh, hi, uh, welcome all. Uh, my name is Shishir. I have been uh, teaching photography here at CMEDU. And today, uh, as the webinar uh, topic says, we will be discussing about e-commerce photography. Uh, what, what, are all the, uh, uh, what are all the things that are involved in e-commerce photography is something that we are gonna discuss about today. And uh, without any further ado, we can start off. And uh, let me start sharing uh, my screen. We'll be discussing mostly with the works that I've shot for e-commerce, what are the difficulties involved and so on. Also, uh, for the attendees out there, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask uh, anything related to e-commerce uh, or photography. I'd be more than happy to take up the questions. So considering the time we have, we will definitely try to address our questions as possible, right? Thank you. And uh, just to let you know, uh, we have uh, panelists uh, Bala sir and also Nile sir with us. They're going to type in answers when and where possible and also uh, the questions that can be answered by me over online. They're going to, uh, you know, forward it to me. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you. Please, uh, Bala sir, do let me know uh, if my screen is visible and then we can let me just clear my screen one second. Can you see my screen? Yes, it is about to come. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. You can go ahead. Yeah, your visible. Your screen is visible. Okay. Fair enough. <coughs> Just a minute. Okay, uh, so uh, welcome all. Uh, like like discussed, we are going to talk more about e-commerce, also called as catalog uh, photography. So uh, it's mostly to do with uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, shooting products which are meant to be sold online, right? So we're going to look into uh, this in detail as to what it consists of. Uh, let's go to the agenda of the day. So we'll, we will have a quick introduction of what e-commerce photography is, and then we will move on to imaging categories. What are the categories that uh, usually are shot in, uh, you know, um, usually in the sense, mostly uh, shot in an e-commerce uh, environment, right? So uh, we can discuss about that. And then we are gonna discuss about what the roles and responsibilities of e-commerce photographers are while he or she is uh, shooting for an e-commerce uh, website or any any such uh, you know, companies. And then uh, finally, we can move on to the Q&A, but uh, uh, guys, I would like to keep this as interactive as possible. So if you if you do have any questions, please do keep uh, relevant questions posted in the Q&A section. And uh, as and when we move on to the slides, we are gonna definitely take up the questions and address as much as possible. Cool, that looks like the agenda for the session. And uh, moving on to the introduction bit of it. Uh, e-commerce photography or, you know, or the e-commerce product photography is basically, you know, it's a process of, you know, uh, shooting high quality product images. It's, it's basically shooting the best images for the particular product, which will end up being, uh, you know, displayed on an e-commerce website which also will help in you know, selling the product. So that's, that's pretty much the basic definition of e-commerce photography, right? And uh, the, the, just to talk about the uh, you know, importance of it, if uh, 
you know for a for a customer for a online shopper if you if i mean most of you guys would have already shopped online i'm pretty sure how it works is the biggest uh, problem with uh, being uh, shopping online right the biggest uh, drawback of shopping online is uh, you don't get to touch or you know see the product in person before you buy it right so that's one of the biggest blockers for a uh, for an online shopper for a customer right so where photographers like us who shoot for you know e-commerce the biggest responsibility for us is we need to ensure that we capture the highest quality of image that is possible so that we we can given all the details to the online shopper and ensure he feels the product and can judge the entire product basis the image that we have shot so that uh, like like uh, mentioned here it's one of the biggest pain point that you know a, a, a online shopper can't really get hold of the pro physical product but our photographs should be uh, of uh, you know high quality that it can make justice to it right uh, good e-commerce photos can attract the right customers definitely yes like uh, you know the the biggest uh, 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 the biggest uh, you know responsibility of an e-commerce photographer would be to you know uh, to shoot those high quality images which can tell a story which which basically needs to uh, you know explain the entire product in images in a visual sense which you know in return will boost the overall quality of the online store like let's say if you are shooting for an xyz e-commerce uh, company you are expected to shoot the best quality images so that it not only helps in the sales bit of the company but also ensures the entire user interface the entire look and you know the entire uh, appeal of the online store is you know uplifted so this is something that is very important guys we as photographers we kind of need to understand this and you know contribute to for the growth of the business of an e-commerce site so that's what the third point talks about here right so what happens if we fail to capture good images this is something that we need to keep in mind because most of the times when when you know when we as photographers don't deliver what is expected out of us we don't do a good job how does it impact it it definitely impacts on the customer basically if i was a customer and if i look at a image which has not been shot well or you know it it is not doing the justice it is meant to do then probably i will lose trust on the particular website that is probably selling it for the particular company and i might not like going back to that site or probably i might not like buying anything from that site so basically that is like loss of trust so i i will lose my trust in that particular website because i couldn't see or you know i couldn't uh, uh, make a buying decision based on the images that has already been shot right so that's that's something that happens uh, uh, you know uh, if if we fail to capture good images also uh, many of our times uh, uh, we would have faced that what we see on the website and what we what we buy will not match we are going to talk about it in details in the pictures uh, moving ahead but uh, on a very high level if i have to touch on that so maybe you might have bought a shoes or some other product which is of a certain color which you would have seen on the monitor or you know on your devices that you use but once it reaches to you it's of a it's of a different tone of that color right so the, there is a color disparity in it or you know the product might look super fantastic in an image but it in real it is not it is not at all appealing or it can be vice versa right so these kind of things when it happens we definitely as customers put a return that is hey guys you know what i don't like this product please take it back so that also happens that's what we are talking here in the third uh, this thing it's not only about uh, losing the customer's trust but also the returns once the product is sold and you you know you have done the sale and then again the customer puts a return because the image was not good or the product is not as per the image that's called a customer return right so that's that's also something that is very uh, very you know uh, let's say a negative for a photographer if if an image goes wrong and uh, 
just to talk about high level of e-commerce uh, uh, you know the the uh, present industry globally we have around 24 million online stores that's that's huge you you know some of the uh, huge bets or some of the huge uh, you know companies uh, we have listed down here at alibaba amazon zing dong and you know all these are all these have global presence they are not limited to one country they have many many you know uh, different uh, franchisees or different uh, presence in different countries right flipkart is again a proper indian based company we know it we have bought in that and they are doing a fantastic job as well so just to just to talk about it there are e-commerce companies who cover categories from you know a to z probably from hardware all the way to you know they sell apparel and you know a lot of pet products and those kind of things like for example alibaba and amazon they sell anything and everything that is possible or can be sold on right flipkart concentrates more on you know uh, apparel accessories and uh, those kind of things and also it's it's a, i mean sorry a mintra concentrate more on more on you know apparel and accessories flipkart again is more or less like amazon and alibaba they they try to cover as much as categories as possible so we need to understand uh, uh, the company or the brand that uh, we are going to shoot for we need to understand what they sell and you know we need to kind of uh, prepare ourselves to get get uh, those kind of uh, you know we, we need to be prepared is what i am trying to tell right so that's that's fairly the e-commerce uh, of photography as an industry today and uh, you know how it works uh, so i think we can go to the next slide any questions so far bala sir or can i go ahead yeah please go ahead sir sure it's thanks fine. yeah so we are going to look at some of the imaging categories so here is when we are going to talk a lot more about image based uh, slides i would uh, want to discuss a lot more about uh, you know how the lighting is well, obviously we are trying to keep it as mixed as possible in terms of aesthetics as well as technicalities so yeah uh, let's let's go deeper into the imaging categories we can start with on figure imaging and on figure imaging or on body imaging is mostly to do with uh, you know uh, images which are involved with uh, models right uh, whatever whatever the uh, products that are sold using a uh, Uh, model is pretty much called on-figure imaging in e-commerce industry. So you can see uh, some of the images that have been shot. So in the first two images, at least, what I can start off uh, by talking is uh, when we are talking about e-commerce photography, it is not only a photographer who is shooting that. So we, I, I hope uh, we guys are already aware of that. It's a, it's a huge team that works, works as a, uh, works as one, right? So uh, while, while I was shooting for these images to just to recollect, we were shooting at least a team of uh, four to five, wherein I was the photographer. I also had a stylist who, who does a major bit of styling. You can see in the images. you know uh, like how the accessories are matched to what the garment is how the footwear is matched you know what the hair uh, hair is another department altogether there are hair stylists makeup artists who work on and you know uh, so they they do they do their bit of the job they are specialized in it and they they are meant to uh, give the best out of what they do right so Uh, uh, as if i have to talk a little more further about uh, styling a stylist does a, a lot of uh, work in these kind of shoots wherein he or she kind of understands what the garment is what kind of accessories need to go in there are there's always a huge re repository of uh, you know of accessories that are available with the stylist so the moment the day the shoot is on or before the day the shoot is uh, supposed to happen the stylist and the photographer uh, sit together they kind of understand what the look of the image should be like whether it is modern whether it is you know whether it is casual whether it is ethnic depending on the garment that you have they kind of prepare the mood board which you guys know so they understand what accessories they 
kind of generally have and they mix and match and then the shoot proceeds uh to talk a fairly bit about the photography part or uh, the lighting you can see as pretty simple we kind of uh, i i at least uh, you know uh, used a huge octa box or a para umbrella for this so uh, because you know, you can see it's a it's a full length that we are trying to capture and uh, you know uh, i didn't want much of uh, shadow to play or a lot of you know uh, uh, highlight and shadow to work in the entire image so if you can see it's one it's pretty much one tone starting from the tip of her head all the way to the toe right so this is also something that you guys need to remember as much as possible while shooting for e-commerce keep your lighting as simple as possible and uh, you know just just keep it uh, fairly fairly lit keep your shadows very minimal and uh, ensure the entire product that you are trying to uh, you know kind of uh, sell or, or show in your image is well lit so that's that's something in related in re, in regards to photography and uh, a little uh, going in depth on the photography itself now that we have covered the lighting part of it if you can see the cropping of the images change basis on what you are trying to you know kind of sell so here it was a complete lifestyle look wherein you wanted to show what the product was it was an, it was a over top and it was a knee length skirt and you know so you you kind of wanted to uh, showcase what works better and uh, a lifestyle image or a or a more moody image would work here whereas here it the the product itself was a tank top or you know or a tank top and a, just a or, you know regular top or on the same image so here you kind of need to crop your image to ensure you zoom in on the product itself and uh, limit your viewer to you know kind of uh, uh, view what is the main focus on this image so that's that's one thing and if you can notice uh, uh, obviously the hair hair department or the hair stylist and the makeup artist how they change the hair from one uh, one or product to another depending on the look that we would have discussed before so that's that's something uh, that can be added on to this slide right so again uh, all all the uh, all the images on this slide or in this collage is shot differently it's just been put together so you can have a look at it uh, in one go so you can see how different looks uh, how different garments are uh, have different poses there's a lot of posing that goes along with uh, you know the garment that needs to be shot for uh, i can i can probably talk a little bit more on this particular image wherein you you can definitely see how there's a slit and to ensure that the slit is captured how the model is kind of posing so that there's a movement in the entire garment and you and the viewer can see how the slit is right and the same applies here you can see just just to ensure that there is a slit and you know you kind of uh, uh, given that uh, uh, i mean uh, to showcase that how the model poses so uh, that that just reminds me of another thing uh, uh, guys uh, while wo while working as photographers uh, you know we also need to ensure that the model knows what his or her poses are we uh, we as photographers tend to you know especially in e-commerce what happens is we kind of work uh, with targets with targets meaning we we have certain Uh, a number of products that need to be shot within a time frame right so you you really cannot waste time on the set meaning you really can't experiment a lot of poses on one garment probably spend like hours or one hour or two hour on a garment right because you got to achieve those numbers you got to you got to kind of balance uh, your time with the quality that you can deliver so while while we are talking about balancing one of the major things that do come in is to work with somebody who is a professional definitely a team of professionals help 
and along with the team who is also a model is very important because he or she needs to know what their poses are if we, if we are talking about uh, these particular set of images if my light is from the right hand side so they need to know which way their their posture should be which way uh, the light is coming and how their poses are going to impact the on the garment or you know how how the uh, shadows are going to play and so on so uh, working with models who are professionals are definitely a big yes uh, it 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 gives you a, a lot of uh, freedom to you know at least concentrate on the job that is required to do from your end so that's that's another tip that i have for uh, in this particular slide so we are pretty much looking at on figure imaging right now you can see the basics of it you know how how posing helps and you know how how good the styling is done there are stylists running around on the set of you know, during the time of the shoot trying to adjust the garment ensuring the fall is right and ensuring the the length of the garment is not you know uh, too high or too low it needs to be exactly fit and you know the the frills or the you know the gatherings on the top is exactly fine the hair style is running around putting the hair so that there is no hair in front of the face there is nothing covering on the face or so on right so uh, i think we have uh, spoken enough about that uh, you know the team that is involved and uh, you know kind of uh, the work that goes in on on figure imaging so far so uh, you guys saw some of the you know casual look or sort of western look that you know, until these slides the like like i discussed uh, in on figure there are multiple different uh, cat sub categories right there are uh, western there are ethnic and uh, there is in ethnic there are you know you know, you know your salwar kameez your uh, sarees and so on and in western obviously you have your suits which are formal semi casual and so on so so you need to you need to pretty much know what kind of model works with what kind of you know uh, outfit that's something that a photographer will work with the art director or the producer understand and understand and decide if the if the model definitely fits and if, if the model can carry the uh, the ethnic wear so that's something that is discussed before the shoot and uh, so most of the times what happens is uh, there's an audition that happens wherein there are trial fits on the model there are test shoots that are done just to understand if the model's entire body structure can carry that particular kind of clothing so uh, most of these shoots have been uh, done with uh, you know with uh, test shoots before and uh, we would have So, you know definitely uh, approach the modeling agency that we regularly work with we kind of understand uh, if the model will be available for the date of the shoots and so on so there's a lot of pre work uh, to and shoot that is involved just like any other kind of uh, you know on body photography whether it is advertising or you know whether it is portrait the, likewise there's there's fair bit of you know pre production work that happens here as well right uh, any questions so far uh, alasan or sir uh, there are couple of questions uh, so if you wanted to take so one question is like sir do you uh, do you do product shoot how different it uh, it is from the apparel shoot uh bala sir you, know, you can be a little louder i what i understand is uh, Hi, you... i'm repeating sir i'm repeating yeah. so it is do you do product shoots that is one and second is how different it is from the apparel shoot uh, uh this is a very good question what what we can do is i can probably park this question because we have our product shoot section coming ahead so at that point of time i will definitely like to take this question up and you know uh, compare both and explain to the attendee here can sure, you do that sure 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 <clears throat> there are few more questions but we'll take it forward so students please uh, uh, just uh, listen to the sir so we we'll take the questions later on sure uh, so the product question i will definitely get back uh, in the next couple of slide we are going to talk about product and i will definitely answer that question right okay cool so uh, like uh, like getting back to the slides guys like i was discussing in ethnic uh, there are you know salwa kameezes and you know those kind of stuff and also there is uh, sarees that is 
typically very much indian this is our ethnic uh, wear where you know this is an ethnic wear uh, which uh, which most of the uh, most of the uh, world globally right globally uh, doesn't have it i mean globally it's it's very difficult to find so the uh, the uh, the uh, major uh, concentration while shooting such is to understand uh, the draping bit of it how how do you drape what is the matching uh, blouse that that can take and you know how how the hair needs to be done the, obviously the hair department and makeup department are going to take care of it but uh, we as photographers need to oversee the entire process we need to we need to discuss with them beforehand as to what really works what is the kind of uh, look that we are trying to achieve and so on and uh, like i was uh, like i was I, i just forgot to mention before we go any further i'll take a minute to explain uh, the uh, the details of the team or the or the uh, team that is involved in working while especially shooting for on body right so there's photographer there's a photographer assistant obviously to help us around with the lighting uh, while we are doing and we have a stylist who generally takes care of the draping matching of the props that is your you know bracelet bangle necklace earrings whatever the entire entire styling bit of it the entire styling of the props styling of the garment everything goes to the on body stylist right so he or she specializes in it so there's a stylist that is involved and there is usually hair and makeup done by two different people there are very specialized people who are doing hair and makeup together today in the industry they do a fantastic job and for this shoot i remember we had hair and makeup done by one person <clears throat> so uh, that's that's something uh, uh, to hair and makeup so we know photographer photographer assistant stylist hair and makeup and then there is an art director so the basically the art director's job is he or she will be overlooking of uh, the entire shoot uh, throughout the shoot they will be you know uh, looking uh, and uh, you know supervising the shoot and uh, they they their job is to like let's say if i'm shooting for this image if i'm shooting let's say 10 different shots uh, the art director will you know decide upon which shot to select which will finally go live on site so basically the criteria that they look for are how aesthetically they are being uh, you know draped how 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 perfect the drapes are excuse me <coughs> how how perfect the drapes are how the fall of the sari is how how the pallu is or uh, you know or falling down is there enough detail in the pallu and so on so based on some of these kind of aesthetic criteria the art director uh, takes a call as to what the final image will be uh, you know or displayed live on site and uh, uh, never to forget to talk about the last uh, uh, or one of the major uh, uh, you know team member is the producer the producer is the guy who pulls the entire shoot together so basically he or she talks to the modeling agencies he or she talks to the you know makeup artist and the hair stylist he or she talks to the stylist photographer they basically coordinate the entire shoot it is not like you know the photographer is free and you know the stylist is uh, free or something like that right the producer takes the responsibility to coordinate to check the call sheet to check the schedule of each team member that is involved to ensure the dates are free for the day of the shoot and then they block it they are the people who do the coordination bit of it they are also the people who take care of the finances they are the ones who keep a track of how many days have the uh, uh, the model work have the photographer work and so on and they, they they keep a ledger of things they keep an account of what happens in the shoot and they report to the finance department so that the uh, payments are clear so they they play a very important role and again like each member in the team each one of them are specialized in doing what they do so i think that that pretty much to do with the team uh, yeah i think yeah so 
uh, these are some of the so we do, we did very quickly take a look uh, of uh, you know the western wear and then they are ethnic very specific to india and then we obviously have the ia that is a intimate apparel we, we overall call it intimate apparel uh, so basically your swim shoot your lingerie all these fall into that uh, you know category there so if i have to <laughs> talk about this particular slide i mean so you you uh, the, the some of the major things that i would want to discuss about is uh, the lighting we anyway have already spoken about uh, you can see in most of the slides it's pretty much constant lighting so once i have fixed my lighting and i have you know gotten my reading right it it stays there and uh, always always remember to have a continuity in lighting it's always a good habit to uh, build your sky guides meaning uh, you you note down and document what your lighting is what the output is what the what the output on the light is what the light meter reading is what shutter speed are you shooting what aperture are you shooting and so on and uh, these these are some of the very uh, uh, very basic things because these give you continuity and these give you a consistency in the job that you are doing guys uh, let's let's uh, remember one thing or maybe uh, maybe I, i would like to point out one thing right all these images are pretty much shot on different days maybe uh, this particular model images that you are shooting are shot on one batch that is one day and again the this model is on a different day and these are again different days but if you can take a look there's a lot of consistency in lighting in regards to the shadows in regards to the highlights and stuff like that right this is achievable or this was achievable only for the reason because i had it documented i knew what my lighting is going to be what what height the light is going to be and so on so every detail possible you got to make a note of it and document it so that tomorrow morning when you're going to start to shoot again you just have to open your document cross check if everything is in place and then start shooting right so getting getting back to the uh, intimate apparel slide here you know, some of the major things are there are very specialized model uh, who do these so the production team generally talks to the modeling agencies who who are uh, willing to do this who can take up this kind of jobs that is one and if even the model can take up the job there are very very specific uh, you know uh, let's say uh, criteria that uh, uh, that the creative team look for by creative team i'm talking about you know photographers our directors or stylists and everybody so what what we as a team do is like i said we do a test shoot we see how the entire body structure is going to work out along with the garment we see how it's going to fit it's it's not it's not any different from any of the other garment so you need to you need to be sure that even an intimate apparel fits the model right and he uh, like uh, we were talking about some of the cons maybe uh, the model uh, shouldn't be too busty or maybe too curvy or maybe the skin the skin the quality of the skin matters a lot you know, uh, so the client that we generally used to uh, shoot for uh, uh, we, we we didn't like tattoos on the body right so we were very specific on you know kind of uh, selecting uh, uh, models who didn't have tattoos because not every customer would relate to a tattoo i don't know like most of the most of the people out there might like tattoos some might not so we didn't want any kind of common factor that would shoo away a customer right so those are some of the things like i said you you kind of need to get get in to your mind right other than that uh, I, i don't see much uh, much that gets added to it one is the quality of the skin yes the structure of the model the body structure of how lean or how how uh, she can carry the outfit that those are some of the very important things that you got to keep in mind while especially shooting in india uh, uh the, i think this is the last slide on on body or on figure imaging uh, so i just had uh, one slide for uh, to discuss a uh, few things on male model as well we saw quite a 
bit about female model we want to also talk about the male model right so here you can uh, the some of the things again the lighting everything remains constant in an e-commerce you let's understand it it's always better to keep it consistent so those all remain the same uh the only addition especially when you're shooting with a male model is depending on how uh, uh, the look of the garment is or how the client wants the images to be right how the style guide is that that or the mood board is you you kind of need to coordinate with the uh, with the model beforehand to ensure he has uh, either a clean shaven face either has a stubble or a beard right you can either select it while the audition is happening uh, have the model brief beforehand so that they have a, a little stubble or in this particular case we wanted it completely clean shave so we have a a clean shaved looking model and for the client we were shooting uh, especially with male models we had uh, we had uh, some sort of a, a you know marketing strategy where we didn't want to show the entire face so we used to call it nose down so that the cropping is done below the eyes right so the image starts only below the nose so so these are some of the uh, some of the things because that for you notice most of these uh, Uh, female uh, uh, models that we have shot are all to do with full face, and uh, when it comes to male models, we had uh, we had figured out that it works better for us to show face uh, when it comes, you know, when the face gets, you know, the eyes get chopped in the image. So uh, other than this, I think uh, there's nothing much to add. The layering of the clothes, you can see there are multi-layered uh, styling that has been done in these images. So and the the way the posing is done is again complete freedom to model. They they are given multiple flow poses and the and the art director kind of freezes on one particular pose. I I would like to take a pause for a minute uh, because we are done with the on figure in on the on figure imaging. Uh, if there are any questions, you can probably ask uh, before we move on to the product section of it. Any questions there, uh, Bala sir, on on figuring? Yes. Uh, so can you, uh, uh, would you like to like continue that question, which is what we have discussed like before? So for uh, that shoot. How sure. Do let me do. Uh, let yeah. me do one thing. Then I will. I will quickly go to the next slide. Uh, uh, we we will. I will just briefly introduce the slide, and then I will take that question up again. Okay. 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 So. thanks so so uh, uh, now that we have seen on figure on figure imaging we will also talk uh, uh, will also talk about another category which is was the shot uh, which is uh, you know table tops table top imaging can consist of a lot of categories like uh, like on figure it also consists of lot of categories right from your handbag all the way to pet products to groceries and things we are going to talk about that in detail but you can see uh, i put up a collage of you know how uh, different handbags different shapes different material you know which has different texture different dimension i compiled it on one slide so you can get a better idea of right so there's this a uh, very pop colored product you can see of uh, the, so so the way i like to you know kind of like the uh, products especially when uh, shooting for e-commerce is i like to keep a directional light you can see in pretty much all my images where you can see the light start from the left hand side and goes to the right so my my directional light my key light is on the left hand side and it it follows through there is a highlight in the starting of the image there are some mid tones and then there comes shadows right or the shadow or the area where the shadow is you can you can very clearly see how that works on a very you know oval shape or, or a different shape of a product because that is when you get the proper dimension of the entire product and by by following this also what happens is where your highlights are you do get to reveal the texture of the entire product so you can see there's a lot of sequence work uh, that is uh, that is on this particular product you can see those uh, shimmering uh, sequences because of 
of the light that is being placed. So it kind of catches that and it gives you uh, entire different feel of product. So you kind of need to understand where to place your light and you know how how to keep it consistent so that there is dimension defined in the product. There's an entire dimension you can see how the product has bulged, how 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 uh, you know. How, how can you make your light useful to detect what the product looks like? So that's something important. Now, uh, now I, I would like to uh, take that question out now. So can you read that out, please? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, Shishir? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, so one question is there. What's the difference, uh, difference sir, in uh, days? whether it raining or sunlight anyhow it is indoor shoot with artificial light may i know this in detail something like that okay if i understand it right uh, mm -hmm. i mean i am very happy this question came up uh, maybe if i understand it right and if i can make uh, you know if i can give answer uh, I, I would be very happy so uh, so basically my understanding is the question is uh, if you are shooting in a controlled situation, especially in indoors, wherein you have strobe lights, you have every control over it, then how, how is it uh, is it better? I think that the question. So if that is the yeah. question, my answer is definitely yes. Just because I I personally like shooting a lot indoors and a lot with strobe lights. So I I personally like uh, having control over the. Uh, or the subject that I work or the lights that I use. So it's definitely a big yes uh, from my end. If you are shooting indoors, you have a lot more control and uh, there is no, uh, there is no, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, there, there's no problem with at least the natural calamities like rain or, you know, bad weather and so on. So the, the, that definitely is a big yes. So shooting indoors help a lot. And yes. yeah, that that pretty much. Is yeah, uh, like as Sishir said, like it is very important because we are looking, we are shooting for commercial shoot. So it it is always good to be work in controlled environment. And since we need to get highlight the details of the product, so it is yes, always should be an indoor if we are shooting for e-commerce, mostly for uh, as. As of now, whatever we are seeing on e-commerce uh, standards, so we have to follow that, and that is the reason indoor shoots are preferable. Yeah, agree. Thanks, but I said there was this other question, right? Uh, difference yes. between uh, prod uh, tabletop and on. can you can you read that out if you have that? A difference between tabletop, I can't see that. Explain on quoting that thing. Uh, one question I can see here, sir. No In one of the photos, the head was chopped or cropped what okay. difference it would make if the head was not cropped yeah this one okay uh, good question uh, so whoever asked this i will i will answer it very honestly right so the the thing is uh, you can either have the head chopped or you can have the entire face visible in the image it really doesn't make much of a difference it obviously the reason for us to you know kind of chop this particular images is because of the copyright. Uh, let's let's uh, let's understand, guys. Every model, like a photographer, also gets paid, right? So it's a it's a paid job. It's a commission job. So the payments are depending also on the terms that have been signed for. Like let's say a model probably shooting a IA, that is your intimate apparel, uh, uh, charges a lot more than a regular. Or, you know, or any other uh, uh, apparel. Likewise, if you want to show a full face, the charges would be different than a crop face. So, so if you are asking about the aesthetical part of it, I I really don't see much to it unless you are doing some editorial or creative conceptual shoot, right? I think uh, that's that's my answer to that. Yeah, Mansi, you wanted to include in this. Hi, Bala. Yeah, I think uh, it's going pretty well. And uh, Shishir has pretty much said what needs to be uh, told about, right? The, of the head and why do we crop it? Yeah. You can go on, Shishir. Thank cool. you. Okay. okay, sir. Yeah, perfect. 
Uh, so, guys, I think it's already close to one. Uh, well, please, please do ask your questions. I will move it a little fast. Okay. So, this slide. Uh, so, you can see the slide right now. The reason I have this slide is uh, to talk a little more about something we haven't uh, spoken till now. Uh, <clears throat> for an e-commerce product, one of the one of the most important thing is to ensure that the product is depicted exactly correctly in as many different variants as possible. Variants meaning as many different angles as possible. If you are a customer, you would want to see how the bag looks like in front angle and what are the details behind this bag. There are ways to do it. Today, there are many sites who are doing the 360 spin of this. You guys would be aware of it. So there's a mouse which you can probably use and you can rotate the entire product. There's one way of doing it. If not, if any do any technical uh, reason the website can't probably you know incorporate that or whatever the reason may be, maybe the cost or whatever, then the photographer can probably shoot in in multiple angles. You can see there's a side profile of it so that you can see the back of the bag. You can see how what what other features they have. They have a zipper. There's another pocket here, and you can see from the side what is the thickness of the bag. How how thick it is and also the bottom the bottom is also necessary because most of the times in products what they have is they either have rivets at the bottom so that the material doesn't get you know uh, spoiled or anything so oh, so it's, it's always better to showcase the bottom of it and obviously there's one open chart the open of the product so that you see the inner compartment what the, what the fabric is how many compartments do they have and so on Right. Along with that, one of the last uh, angle would be a scale shot. Basically, we call it a scale shot for the reason the customer would like to know how long the product is, how will it fit on the model. Right. In in apparel, guys, you see a model wearing it, which as it is becomes a scale kind of thing. How big is the garment, or how big it is. In product, just because we don't have that particular angle or that particular variant included we kind of go with the scale shot here in these it's more of a silhouette pretty, uh, ready for us which we used but there are many sites or many many clients who prefer these kind of uh, scale shots to be done on a real model and on real uh, real time shoots right so this kind of is an entire overview of how different angles can contribute a customer to look into one product and understand what are the different you know angles what needs to be uh, seen or uh, this kind of in turn helps the customer to you know, come to a decision whether to buy the product or not right uh, just to just to just before i forget to add or add on this right uh, while shooting this guys remember to keep your images consistent. What do I mean by consistent? You can see the colors of the color of the entire bag. Pretty much, it should be as close as to the original product that you that you get, right? So just because uh, you are the only person who has a physical product in hand, you have the liberty to do the color correction or you know get the most accurate color while shooting or you know while doing your post production and ensure all the angles matches to the original color of the product right so that's that's something that you got to keep in mind especially while shooting different angles for the same product uh, just another couple of uh, subcategories and pages so you can see uh, here I, I have changed my lighting from left to right it's more of a right to left. It, it depends on the product that I would be shooting for this category. We're mostly doing it front face. You can see both of these are a glossy material. So there are different kinds of luggages that you come with. There are some, some materials that are made up of fabric. There are some made of you know plastic fiber and so. So lighting different. Uh, material uh, definitely changes. You cannot, especially while talking products, you cannot have a consistent lighting or mistake one lighting suits for every product. No, there needs to be changes made very often. 
So you need to be very quick while doing your lighting setups for these kind of things. So you need to understand how the material reacts to the lighting and so on, right? <clears throat> so uh, those were handbags that we looked upon, or uh, we can also look uh, into the jewelry bit of it. So jewelry, like we all know, uh, it's one of the most uh, toughest uh, to shoot. Uh, so like like I was discussing uh, initially when I when I uh, said uh, there are targets or there are certain number of products that you need to shoot in a day. Right? So likewise, you can uh, you, you can also I can also probably say when you are shooting. Uh, High touch product or you know very reflective products like a jewelry watch or you know probably you know, refrigerator and so on. What what you can probably uh, I mean what needs to be kept in mind is it's not the same amount of products or the same number of products that you can shoot. These are definitely more challenging and takes a lot of time on the set. So the numbers that you can shoot in a day would definitely reduce. So, uh, also, also uh, these kind of shots. If you, if you look at the entire section of uh, jewelry, it's not only with lighting. There's a lot to do with focus stacking to ensure there is edge to edge focusing. You know, the entire product is you know uh, arranged properly. So, uh, just before I forget, I'd like to add one, one more thing. Like you, like I explained. How they are uh, stylists who are doing uh, your on-body styling, right? on-figure uh, styling. Likewise, there are product stylists. So they they are they are. I mean, I have very less words to explain. They are uh, they are the people who make our jobs a lot easier. I just want to go back to this slide and show you what their job is in regards to these images. It's, it's very difficult for a photographer with the, with, the, with the expertise that we come in. It's very difficult for us to, you know, kind of arrange these traps. If you look at pretty much all these traps, they are falling in a in a pretty even distance from the bag, in a exact curve shape, in pretty much all the bag. So uh, here, at least the stylist's job is to kind of prepare that entire product, make it stand exactly in the position that needs to be and so on. It, it's not just in handbags, it's pretty much everywhere. Even, even if you take a look at uh, jewelry, it's a stylist who, who kind of, uh, you know, contribute to the entire shoot to ensure this particular uh, jewelry is formed the exact circle shape or this particular necklace is having the exact V shape, right? So they are the people who spend that time and the experience that they come with. They are the time who spend time on the set to fix this to ensure there is symmetry in product and the product is, uh, uh, you know, arranged in the perfect angle that is required and uh, so on. So that's that's the stylist or a product stylist job on set so we need to understand uh, while shooting products there's a lot of involvement from, from our product stylists which we need to team up with especially when shooting commercial shoots or e-commerce or any of such uh then that uh, lighting yes each each one of these images have pretty much different lighting sometimes there are Flat. There is, you know, there is your uh, skimmers or uh, diffusion tanks that are in front. You can see a little bit of opening on these pearls where there are black dots. That's where the camera is. You can see those reflections. Other than that, it would have been completely covered with, uh, you know, but papers and there's a lot of light uh, that has bounced off so that there's no harsh, uh, you know, highlight or so on. Each each one of these, basic the basic of the set would remain the same, but Addition of highlights of modifiers would keep changing depending on what what result you want to achieve, especially while shooting jewelry. Right? Any questions or uh, so far? Balas, uh, anything related? Uh, no, sir. I think you can. Okay. Fair enough. Cool. So uh, just just to uh, you know, talk a little further about focus stacking, you guys can see how it is, you know, in regards to the sharpness of it from the starting bit of it to the end. 
the entire focus stacking needs to be done so which also contributes to the extension of time while especially shooting uh, for jewelry so it's not only about the technical challenges that we come across it's also about you know the post production that is involved how do you stack your images how do you shoot without any shake so that there is no blur in the image and so on right uh watches yes the way uh, i used to light watches was pretty much fixed uh, so you, it it's it was pretty much fixed there was four lights from four directions top bottom right and left profile all four lights with soft boxes so that used to give me a very evenly lit image and there was an additional light in front with a barn door with a honeycomb grid which used to give me a highlight a specular uh, highlight on the dial you can see there are multiple you know uh, different facets on the uh, on the dial there's a lot of detailing a lot of texture involved inside it and you know so on so by uh, that's a, that's a overview of what the lighting looks like again uh, prepping the products that is preparing the product is a very important thing because especially while shooting these high glossy material the biggest challenge is the dust so you need to ensure you shoot in a dust free environment you need to constantly keep uh, preparing the product you need to kind of keep uh, cleaning the product there are multiple cleaning materials that there are there are you know alcohol based cleaning agents that can be used there are lint free cloths and so on so those kind of in depth cleaning will give you the maximum uh, you know best output in a raw image obviously on top of that a little bit of cleaning of dust and you know a little bit of high or uh, tweaking your contrast or colors can be done uh, in your post uh i think uh, you can see how uh, also to talk about the material bit of it if you can see you can see different kinds of watches put into this collage you can see how a brush metal will look like or react with light so all this brush metal and the highlights that are captured here are pretty much used or are being shown because of the uh, you know the honeycomb grid that was used in front for the dial the same applies here and these blacks are just to add uh to the entire aesthetics of the image because that for me is when it kind of uh, gives you the stainless steel effect on the watch if not it would have just go as a matte surface or even probably look very plastic so i have intentionally added these blacks here and there so that there is a bit of you know uh highlights and shadows to differentiate the material hi uh, shishi just just a, a small question on the same watch uh, image we have here uh, nisha says uh, the watch on the right yeah the black one uh, is it uh, okay i'll read out the question so is that watch on right entirely black or it's the light reflecting making it look silverish yes it's entirely black it's uh, it's entirely black and the light sorry one sec it's entirely black the light that is reflecting here are meant to show the reflective surface of the watch or the material of the watch so the silverish feel that you are getting is because of the highlights that are captured from this off box but the watch is entirely black so uh, if if the question uh, if i understand the question right if you if you are asking is it acceptable yes uh, unless and until uh, you are keeping it as minimal as possible to ensure that there are other variants to it also wherein you can see the entire product with the same color range and uh, and uh, the highlights need to add to the entire product to make sure you convey the material of the product it's, it cannot be the entire watch can be in this kind of a tone because that's when you kind of uh, you know come to come to a confusion whether the entire watch is silver or you know black but these kind of highlights uh, you know kind of add to uh, the entire material of the watch which is a uh, stainless right. all right thank you thank you so much thanks so moving ahead uh, there's uh, sunglasses which are again uh, you know uh, shot on table tops so sunglasses are uh, you know pretty easy in my opinion because i have been uh, shooting sunglasses 
and uh, you know the way i shoot is i uh, pretty much use one single light source and a lot of uh, you know reflectors uh, silver card white card and so so it it's pretty simple if i have to talk about the light setup on these products it was just one huge light source on the top which was a 4 by 6 softbox or 3 by 2 softbox on the top uh, a pro photo softbox with a pro photo head and uh, uh, the only thing while shooting sunglasses that uh, was challenging and uh, i used to spend more time was to get a depth of field so i used to uh, ensure that i used to use a 2470 pulled pulled back and uh, then at the longer end of 70 so that i get the depth because sunglasses uh, i i really didn't want to spend too much time on sunglasses because of whatever the reasons are uh, there is no time that i get to sit and stack the images and you know kind of do it in post so i i would rather prefer to achieve it in one shot hence you know i i like to keep my set as simple as possible uh and in regards to styling of these products there is no much styling involved it's more of prepping preparing the product how do you clean the surface how do you you know use your gloves all the time so that there's no fingerprint on the on the on the product itself and how do you arrange it in the camera keep your uh, you know, keep your angles as consistent as possible because when you see these images online you cannot have different different angles let's say if you are shooting uh, different sunglasses in the same angle you need to ensure that there's some kind of a marker or a guideline so that you know you you consistently keep arranging your product in the same line and uh, ensure all your products that you shoot in the day are aligned to that line right so those are some of the tips again for sunglasses i guess <clears throat> uh last set last set is something very challenging it's it's so uh, uh, i i find it very interesting to shoot because uh, we are talking about jewelry watch all the game different but last set is something very very different so the, if i have to talk about the set area that is the shooting area we used to shoot at about what 30 feet by 30 feet so it it was completely completely a huge set because there's a lot of movement that happens the product needs to come and this was a this was almost a 5 feet uh, you know long or a 5 feet height uh, uh, refrigerator and it was completely black shiny black so we to we, we used to you know kind of find lot of difficulties in the movement of the product how do you uh, because the assistants we we generally used to work with one or two assistants when uh, you are working with you know a uh, lot set you need lot many assistants you need three people or four people including yourself to lift the refrigerator place it in the position that you need and you know do the lighting part the lighting was pretty much fixed we used to use around eight lights i guess it takes a lot more time to display you know discuss about the lighting bit of it so i'm just keep it very simple on the lighting end because that itself will take too much time so we used to use around eight different lights uh, over the over the subject on the top and then uh, i think another two lights for the background uh, or sorry four lights for the background and uh, six lights on the top that was a like in set for pretty much for uh, the refrigerator and the chimney at least right so that that amount of light that was required to shoot the image because any any lesser light would probably not give the dimension of the product it would not help me achieve what was supposed to be you know achieved and uh, obviously uh, the entire considering the reflector surface of the entire product uh, we had built something more or less like a light tent which which was like completely covered you know 10 feet by 10 feet uh, that is both the sides and 10 feet on the top and 10 feet in the front it was a complete light tent kind of a, a setup that we had and all the lights were bouncing off from the ceiling so that that pretty much uh, that i can probably give you a overview of large appliances of the large set uh, that i used to shoot right 
and uh, if if there are any questions on the uh, reflective uh, nature of this and how this gradation has been achieved yes it's very difficult to achieve and uh, considering you are shooting for an e-commerce and uh, you're working against time to achieve this in camera would be possible it would take a lot lot more time so just because we were not privileged enough to have enough time all these were created in post and you know it, it, it's done in post the creation has been created in post to just give that uh, reflective feel to it uh any, any questions on tabletop imaging or can i go ahead uh, yes uh, sir, sir, can you check your uh, microphone because your voice is continuously breaking maybe from uh, like is it better now yeah yes it is better yeah and uh, shishit sir like uh, yes so uh, you uh, you see like we are uh, I, i think we are about to finish so shall i go ahead uh, for something like uh, how long it will take me yeah yeah if you have any questions you can just ask i think i'm almost done okay so there is one question there are reflections in the bottom of every product is it mandatory for e commerce shoot to shoot on glass no 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 so it depends on the the uh, client that you guys are working for if the client requires a reflection yes you can you shoot it on a acrylic sheet or a glass whatever you choose it if the client doesn't require it you can always keep it uh, without reflection like you can see most of these products we if we feel that doesn't require a reflection we don't have a reflection right so it depends on the customer uh, or the client that you are working for most of the sites do prefer it more some sites don't prefer it shall i move on yes yes okay cool uh, so one one last bit is the automated imaging so automated imaging is something that is kicking up uh, very quickly in the e-commerce uh, sector so you guys need to aware be aware of uh, what is happening in the automated world as well so while automated uh, imaging we are trying to talk mostly about uh, automated devices there are these kind of devices are where you put in your product and use your computer to just key in the you know key in the uh, sequence that you want or the format of imaging or the sequence of imaging that you want and the machine does the entire bit for you so most of these images that are shot are not shot by me these are usually done by an operator because as photographers what what, what we contribute here is your your expertise come and you know uh, setting up the entire device you know you can you can if you are interested in uh, or, you know artificial intelligence you can probably look at building some devices like this on your on your own or probably build sequences and so on so this is more of a uh, you know more of a uh, non photographer job but uh, for photographers it's very essential to know how these devices work how to troubleshoot these kind of devices how to work with them because that's going to be the future and uh, that's something that i wanted to add in automated devices and uh, the downfall for automated imaging at least in today's industry is uh, the quality of the images are still not by par with on on set imaging that is table top imaging where a photographer has the control on the lights he can move the lights uh, as he want it's not like you cannot move lights on these devices you do can but uh, it gets more complex because you cannot probably add a lot of uh, diffusion tanks or cutters as and when you feel like so automated imaging is more for uh, you know uh, products which are a uh, low cost maybe maybe like your grocery spec products and all where quality of the product or i mean quality of the image really doesn't matter much but yes there's an image that is required for a customer to make a buying decision yes that is when you pre pre predominantly use automated image so you can you can read a lot more about uh, automated imaging uh, on the internet there's a lot more available editorial imaging is again i want to keep it as less as possible while while we are talking about editorial imaging the, you can probably relate it 
to any of the advertising imaging that you do or any of the uh, collaterals or you know banners print ads that you shoot for it's pretty much the same it's just that you are targeting to an e-commerce customer who lands up uh, who who lands up on your website right so uh, you can see these were uh, shot for a brand called solimo uh, which was amazon owned so uh, i kind of launched their products along with a stylist so you can see how we have used different uh, props the styling bit of it was entirely sourced with the stylist you do the uh, sourcing you do your homework you prepare your mood board you do your lighting homework you know where to place your product how to place how to light and so on so these kind of landed up on the uh, banner of their website so this is something to do with editorial image right and again this was shot for uh, kindle again for amazon this was on their uh, or this was on their uh, print ad and they were also on their blog for a while so this was when the kindle was launched the uh, the kindle device or uh, i was saying was launched and they wanted to make a uh, you know a mood shot for their propaganda pur purpose which was also used in on their e-commerce site as banners in a different layout but yeah these are some of the some of the works that i have shot for uh, on amazon there so uh, uh, why do i call these editorial or lifestyle imaging as uh, uh, these again were shot for a brand called vedaka uh, which used to sell on amazon so along with the different variants of the product that is a packaging of the product different variants scale shot and everything we also had something called as a lifestyle shot so that the customer sees how it is uh, you know how how it looks in the in the real life uh, setting right so these kind of shots generally the, uh, a client will reach out nowadays especially uh, there are a lot of clients asking for one such lifestyle uh, lifestyle variant along with the catalog imaging so you need to be prepared to shoot both and you need to know how to handle both uh, in one go right these were some of the shots that i had done for uh, coffee day so you can see these were packaging uh, i'm sorry this was i couldn't take off this from the layout but uh, these are some of the uh, web uh, collaterals that they had done for their uh, use on site so again you can see how the products the typical use of uh, product imaging and converting it into a layouting is used here the same again for co copy day a bit i think that's fairly fairly the works that i've shot and uh, there was a fair bit of time spent on there uh, before i close i would want to quickly uh, read through these points so that uh, we all know what the roles and responsibilities of a photographer for an e-commerce photographer look like right so any any like any other photographers in the industry may be advertising may be uh, you know uh, editorial or whatever the genre is Uh, an e-commerce photographer also needs to be proficient in shooting different range of uh, products basically you know like you saw you, you should be able to shoot from automobile products all the way to uh, you know a garment that gives you a lot of leverage over the other photographers in the industry because that way you can contribute better to the growing business of an e-commerce right and uh, a uh, photo uh, e-commerce photographer uh, should have the aesthetic vision in the area of lighting and composition like any other photographer you need to know what style of lighting and composition works better for e-commerce and you need to understand that and you know deliver uh, the best that you can and uh, like like in my last slide uh, last couple of slides i mentioned having a strong hold over editorial imaging along with your catalog imaging uh, you know works works better it's not like i'm a product photographer i know how to shoot good on plain backgrounds that's not only going to uh, be uh, sufficient you also need to know how to do the editorial bit of it how to create different lighting how to work with props how to how to you know balance the composition and so on so you need to you need to kind of keep yourself updated and keep yourself you know uh, uh, keep yourself well prepared for both kinds of imaging 
lastly, uh, yes, a photographer plays a very uh, important role in the growth of a business of an e-commerce uh, basis on the images that he shoots and he makes them live is how the growth uh, is is something that contributes to the growth of a business. If like like in the first slide we discussed, if the image is bad, the business goes for a toss. If the image is good, then obviously the customer would like to come back to that particular site to look for more uh, products that he would want to buy, and uh, you know that kind of results in a good customer experience also. So these are some of the very high high level points that you can keep in mind especially while working for an e-commerce uh, client right i think uh, that's fairly bit of it we are on time i think uh, if we have any further questions i think probably i can take it now uh, no sir i think uh, we have answered our questions fantastic so i think uh, you guys had uh, uh, fair, uh, fair bit of a session today. I hope I have addressed all your questions. If you do have any questions, we would like to conduct more such seminars and we would like to take up any questions that you have over emails. Uh, thank you so much uh, for attending. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shashir. It was wonderful. Thank you, Shashir. Thank you, Mansi. Bala. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mansi. Thank you, Shashir. Thank you, Nilesh. Thank you. Yeah.